Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to be discussing something called the corneal reflex. Now, this is a reflex arc that's going to involve two cranial nerves, the trigeminal nerve, which is cranial nerve number five, and the facial nerve, which is cranial nerve number seven. Now, you'll notice this diagram right here, and this is very, very similar to the setup that we had in the pupillary light reflex, except this one uh, is really just going to involve cranial nerves two and three, corneal reflexes, cranial nerves five and seven. Okay. Now, as I mentioned, it involves both the trigeminal and the facial nerves. The afferent uh, neurons are from the trigeminal nerve, so these are going to detect sensation on the cornea. Okay? Remember that the trigeminal nerve is really involved in facial sensation. It does have some motor function, uh, but mainly sensation in the face. And then the efferent neurons are going to be provided by the facial nerve. And so these are going to be motor in function, and they're going to be really responsible for closing the eyelids. So for example, the upper lid will bring that down. I think we all know what happens when you blink. Okay. Now, before we get into all the details here, I want you to think about something. Okay. If you have some stimulus, a tactile stimulus, that comes close to one of your eyes, just one of them, doesn't matter which one. You could think of the left one if it makes you feel better. And you bring that stimulus really, really close. Maybe it uh, touches your eyelash or something like that. Uh, do you blink with one eye or two? Well, assuming everything's functioning normally, you blink with both of your eyes, and they both blink at the same time. You can even try this. You kind of just bring one of your fingers pretty close to one of your eyes, both will blink at the same time. They do not blink independently of one another. So keep in mind that assuming everything's intact with this reflex arc, both eyes should blink at the same time. Okay, So if I stimulate the left eye, that is the left cornea, both eyes should blink at the same time. If I stimulate the right cornea, both eyes should blink at the same time. So if you are looking at a patient and you're actually running this reflex test, if only one eye blinks, that tells you there's something wrong. And so we're going to look at this and ultimately by the end of the video, hopefully, hopefully be able to determine where the problem is. Is it in the cranial nerve 5 or the cranial nerve 7? We're going to proceed in this video by really thinking about tactily stimulating the left cornea. We could do the same thing with the right, but just understand everything would be flipped. So we'll just use the left side. So we tactile stimulate the left cornea and normally both eyes blink. But what happens if let's say cranial nerve five on the left side is damaged? And I've indicated that here with this red line. So we're actually lesioning the left trigeminal nerve, left cranial nerve five, and we need to figure out what's gonna happen if we stimulate the left eye. All right, so tactilely stimulating the left cornea will cause both eyes to blink. Now what happens if we have a lesion here or we damage the left cranial nerve 5, left trigeminal nerve? So this, this pathway right here in this area is interrupted because we've lesioned this nerve. Let's figure out what happens. So if we tactilely stimulate the left cornea, let's just follow this path. Well, normally we would have kind of a direct reflex where if we stimulate the left eye, we go straight down and we get blinking of the left eye. Okay. However, this pathway right here is interrupted, uh, not because of the facial nerve, okay, but because we've lesioned the left trigeminal nerve. So this direct pathway, again, this is interrupted. So the left eye shouldn't blink in that case. What about the right side? Because in normal physiology, both eyes should blink. So in physiology, any time we stimulate one side of the body and we get the response on the other, that's called a consensual reflex. Okay, This would actually be a right consensual reflex because it would be the right side blinking. Okay, So if we tried that, if we tried to stimulate the left eye, notice we have this decussation over here where these tracts cross over. So again, if we stimulate the left eye, what should happen is uh, this trigeminal nerve should transmit information across to the other side to the right facial nerve, cranial nerve 7, but there's a problem with that. Again, the problem is that this cranial nerve 5 on the left side is lesioned. So not only is this direct pathway interrupted, but the consensual pathway that causes the other eye to blink is also interrupted. In other words, if we lesion cranial nerve 5 on the left, 
then stimulating the left cornea will do nothing. We shouldn't see blinking in either of these eyes. And so all we're doing is we're really just following these tracks and seeing what's intact, okay? Now on the flip side, if we stimulate the right cornea, we should see blinking in both of these eyes. So the stimulation of the right cornea, we still should have both corneal reflexes. So again, the right direct pathway or, or reflex, this is completely intact. There's no lesion here. Uh, if we stimulate the right cornea, we should get a blinking in the right eye. This pathway is intact. Same thing with the consensual pathway. This would be a left consensual because even though we're stimulating the right cornea, we're looking at left blinking or blinking on the left side. Again, stimulate the right cornea. We follow this pathway. Fibers cross over. Again, there's no interruption there in that pathway. So to summarize this very quickly, if the trigeminal nerve is damaged on either side, we end up with a situation where stimulation of the cornea on the side of the damage leads to no reflex on either side, whereas stimulation of the cornea on the other side, both sides work for this corneal reflex. Okay? Now let's consider a case where we now damage cranial nerve number seven on the left side. So we can go here. So now we damage the left cranial nerve number seven, left facial nerve, and let's see what happens. So we're gonna stimulate the left cornea. Now obviously this left direct pathway is still failing, okay? Not because of the trigeminal nerve this time, but if we follow this, we can see the pathway is interrupted right here at the facial nerve, okay? So that means if we stimulate the left cornea, we shouldn't actually see um, any blinking in the left eye. However, notice the right consensual reflex where we stimulate the left cornea and we get blinking on the right side. This one is actually intact now because again, we stimulate the left cornea, we follow this pathway, we see the fibers cross over, and then we don't see any interruption on that right consensual tract or reflex. Okay? And so stimulation of the left cornea leads to blinking in the right eye. So that's different than what we saw when we lesion the trigeminal nerve on the left side. Again, back to this, if we now stimulate the right cornea, notice that the right direct reflex is intact. Again, because we're not lesioning anything on the right side. So we can just follow this pathway straight down, stimulate the right cornea, we get blinking in the right eye. If we stimulate the right eye though, we're not gonna get blinking on the left side. So that would be the left consensual. In this case, if we stimulate the right cornea, we follow the tract, we see it cross over, but then this left facial nerve is now interrupted because this is where we did the lesion, okay? So to summarize it here, if you lesion, let's say the left facial nerve, okay, then the right direct reflex will be intact and so will the, the right consensual. But the left direct and the left consensual, those will be out of commission okay so to speak and so that's really the corneal reflex right there in a nutshell and really with this if you have a question about this on an exam it's really better to kind of draw out kind of a rough sketch of this and think about it rather than trying to memorize a bunch of stuff it's much better if you understand the pathway and think about it you could sketch this out fairly quickly okay now here's a question for you um, and let's actually remove this here so we can play around with this. Damage to what structure? So again, we're talking about left or right trigeminal nerve versus left or right facial nerve would be in, involved in the loss of the corneal reflex on the left side, okay? So again, when we say loss of the corneal reflex on the left side, it shouldn't matter which cornea we stimulate, the left corneal reflex has to be obliterated, okay? So think about this. If we lesion right here at the left trigeminal nerve, yeah, if we stimulate the left cornea, then we're not gonna get blinking in the left eye. However, we still have that left consensual reflex, right? Stimulating the right cornea, we follow this, this series of tracks and they cross over and nothing is obliterated in this pathway. So again, we can still get blinking in the left eye with damage to the left trigeminal nerve because we still have not interrupted this pathway. So that leads me to believe that we're gonna to have to actually lesion this nerve right here, the left facial nerve, and we can test it. If we stimulate the left cornea, again, we're not gonna get blinking in the left eye at all, okay? Because again, this direct pathway is interrupted by the lesion at the left facial nerve. 
Likewise, if we try to do the left consensual corneal reflex, stimulate the right cornea, we follow this pathway, it crosses over again. It's still interrupted. So if you have a situation where you have no blinking on one side regardless of what you do, that tells you that the lesion has to be um, in the facial nerve. Okay. If you have a situation where you stimulate the one, one cornea and you don't get blinking, but you can stimulate the other one and get blinking in that eye, then that tells you a trigeminal nerve is damaged. Okay? And so generally speaking here, if you lesion one of these facial nerves, um, whatever side is lesioned, it's impossible now to get blinking in that eye, regardless of which cornea you're stimulating, because either way, whether it's the direct or the consensual corneal reflexes, uh, they're both interrupted in either case. Okay. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the corneal reflex. Again, don't try and memorize these results. Um, really understand what's going on here. Draw a rough sketch here, and you should be able to get this answer fairly quickly if you understand the concept. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.